The Divine Plan Program presents The Beautiful Harmony of the Scriptures. Enjoy the rich experience of discovering the truth of the Bible. The Lord says, Come, let us reason together. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Divine Plan Program presents the old, old story of gracious heavenly love. Today's lesson, Swords into Plowshares, will remind us of the many scriptures in the Bible which give assurance that the time will come when there will be peace on earth. Are you praying for the time when there will be peace on earth? When will the nations beat their swords into plowshares? Our theme text for the lesson, Swords into Plowshares, is found in the prophecy of Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. We quote, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, that is, the kingdom of the house of the Lord, shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. Friends, may we emphasize the prophet's words which assure us that this prophecy is true and will be completely fulfilled in due time. He wrote, For the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. What God has promised will come to pass. In Isaiah 14, 24, we read, The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. We encourage each one who is seeking to know and do God's will to search the scriptures daily and rightly divide the word of truth. In writing to Timothy, the apostle Paul encouraged him to study, that is, use diligence to show himself approved unto God a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Those who are diligently searching the scriptures and who are seeking to do God's will shall know the truth and the truth shall make them free. 
John 8, 32. May we note that the promises, one, pertaining to the nations beating their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, two, the assurance that in due time nations shall learn war no more, and three, the promise they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, relate to an earthly scene, not a scene in heaven. God's will is done in heaven. There have never been any wars in heaven. It was Jesus who taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. When will this prayer be answered? When will the nations learn war no more? When will they beat their swords into plowshares? At the present, the nations are using the natural resources to prepare for war. The prophecy of Joel, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, is being fulfilled. We quote, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. The prophet Daniel Chapter 12, verse 1, reminds the reader that when Michael, that is Christ, would stand up, that is, begin his reign, there would be a time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation even to that same time. Do you realize that these and related prophecies are in process of fulfillment? The world is certainly experiencing its greatest time of trouble. How thankful we are for the assurance of our Lord recorded in Matthew 24, 22. The reader is assured that the elect Christ, head and body members, will stop the great time of trouble before all flesh is destroyed. The very last feature of the great time of trouble will occur in Israel. It will be the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. The prophet Amos, chapter 9, verses 14 and 15, assures us that Israel is back to stay. We quote, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. At the present, a representative group of the natural descendants of Abraham is back in the Holy Land. They are dwelling confidently. However, the time will come when all nations shall be gathered against Jerusalem according to the prophecy of Zechariah 14, verse 2. This would seem to teach that the time will come when all nations shall either directly or indirectly be against the tiny nation of Israel. It would seem as if Israel would be wiped off the map. Will this be the case? No, friends. Continue reading in the prophecy of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. How thankful to be assured 
that the Lord, through the elect Christ, will in due time stop the great time of trouble. This will mean the deliverance of Israel and eventually all nations. This assurance is also brought to our attention in Psalm 46, verses 9 and 10. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Did you notice, friends, that in due time the Lord will be exalted in the earth? In due time, God's will will be done on earth even as His will is now done in heaven. Soon, we believe, the spiritual phase of God's kingdom will be fully set up. Then, shortly thereafter, the law will begin to go forth of Zion. Zion refers to the spiritual phase of the kingdom. Zion is shown by the top part of the pyramid located in the Messianic age, the first age of the third dispensation. God's law will be put in the mind of each one of Adam's race during the mediatorial reign of Christ. In Jeremiah 31, 33, we are informed that this work of putting God's law in the minds of each individual will start in Israel, but will spread to the Gentiles in due time. We read, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. All will come to an accurate knowledge of the truth, as we note in 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. All mankind will be saved, that is, released from the prison house of death, and then taught the truth pertaining to God's plan. This will include even those who have died who will be awakened from the sleep of death. May we read 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Friends, it is possible for all to be released from the prison house of death in due time and then come to an accurate knowledge of the truth because the man Christ Jesus gave himself a ransom for all. The prophet Isaiah uses water covering the sea to illustrate this truth that in due time all mankind will learn the truth. In Isaiah 11, verse 9, we read, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. How thankful we are for this assurance that in due time all mankind will learn the truth. Then the words of Jeremiah chapter 31, 34 will be fulfilled. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The prophet Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 also reminds us that all people will be taught the truth in due time. In fact, the prophet reminds us that this will be after the great time of trouble is stopped. There will be people alive at that time who up to that time 
have not been converted. Why is the great time of trouble permitted? One reason why the trouble is permitted is in order that the things out of harmony with the new kingdom will be removed. Another reason is to prepare the hearts of mankind to receive the truth and the kingdom blessings which will follow the time of trouble. Zephaniah wrote, Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From the foregoing scriptures, one can see that all mankind will come to an accurate knowledge of the truth when the earthly phase of the kingdom is established. God's law will be put in the minds of each individual. However, it is one thing to learn God's plan under the favorable conditions of the kingdom and another thing for one to accept and obey it. Those who do respond to the truth and accept and obey the Redeemer will have God's law rewritten in their hearts as already noted in the words of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33. So long as obedient, they will live forever right here upon the earth. What will happen to those who fail to obey under the favorable conditions of the kingdom? Those who remain wicked will perish. Psalm 37, verse 20. In Acts 3, 23, we are informed, and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Did you notice, friends, that the ones who do not obey at that time will be destroyed? Not one suggestion is given that the disobedient will be kept alive in torment or in any place. They will perish. The destruction of the disobedient ones is called the second death in the book of Revelation. The second death is a death from which there will be no resurrection. In our theme text, Micah 4, 1 through 4, we are reminded that in due time, the word of the Lord shall go forth from Jerusalem. What is pictured by Jerusalem? Jerusalem pictures the earthly phase of the kingdom in the hands of the princes. These princes are the faithful ones who lived and died before the death of Jesus. Some of these faithful ones are Abel, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the prophets, and John the Baptist. In Psalm 45, 16, we are informed that these shall be made princes in all the earth. They will have the job of making sure that everyone learns the truth and enforcing the word of the Lord. Jerusalem, that is, the earthly phase of the kingdom, is illustrated by the lower part of the pyramid located in the Messianic Age. After the earthly phase of the kingdom is established in the hands of the princes, it will grow until it fills the whole earth. This is the work of the major part of the Messianic age. As soon as the earthly phase of the kingdom is established, the natural resources of earth, which had previously been used to prepare for war, will be used for peaceful purposes. 
This is illustrated by the words of our theme text. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Micah also prophesied that they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. What does this mean? The grapevine produces grapes. The fig tree produces figs. Economic security for all is pictured here by the vine and the fig tree. However, friends, there is a deeper lesson taught by these words. They shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree. In John 15:1, our Lord said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. In verse 5, he said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. During the gospel age, the third age in the second dispensation, some who have cleaned up from sin and its defilements and accepted the Redeemer have been called to walk in the footsteps of the Savior in the narrow way. Matthew 20, 16, Matthew 7, 13, and 14. Those who accept the invitation to walk in the narrow way become branches in the true vine. However, the purpose of this is in order that they might have the privilege of suffering with Christ. In 2 Timothy 2.12 we read, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. One who becomes a branch in the true vine during the gospel age, upon finishing his walk in the narrow way faithfully unto death, will cease to be a branch and will become a part of the root. That is, he will become a body member of the true vine who is Christ. Our Lord and his bride will have the privilege of blessing all the families of the earth after the earthly phase of the kingdom is established. Our Lord and his body members are the spiritual seed of Abraham pictured by the stars of heaven. Genesis 22, 17 and 18, Galatians 3, 16 and 29. This uh, spiritual seed of Abraham will give all mankind the opportunity of coming to a knowledge of the truth. Each one who accepts and obeys the Savior will become a branch in the true vine. However, these will be in the earthly phase of the kingdom. May we emphasize that it will be necessary for one to accept and obey the true vine if he gains life on any plane. In Acts 4, verse 12, we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What is meant by the expression, they shall sit every man under his fig tree? In the scriptures, the fig tree represents the Jewish nation. Please see Matthew 24, 32, and Jeremiah 24. Our lesson has already called attention to the fact that the new covenant will be inaugurated with Israel. This will be after Jacob's trouble has been stopped by divine intervention. The blind eyes in Israel will then begin to open. As soon as the Gentiles realize that God, through the Christ, is blessing the natural descendants of Abraham with this new covenant arrangement, they will wish to also become a part of it. As they do so, they will begin to sit under the fig tree, so to speak. 
eventually all the willing and obedient of the human family will become Israelites indeed. How meaningful is our theme text. We are living in the last days of the second dispensation and the beginning of the third dispensation. The spiritual phase of the kingdom represented by Zion is gradually being set up. In due time, it will be fully set up. Soon thereafter, it will be time for the earthly phase of the kingdom, pictured by Jerusalem, to be set up. Then all mankind will come to an accurate knowledge of the truth. Wars will cease. They will beat their swords into plowshares. The natural resources will be used for peaceful purposes. The time will come when there will be economic security for all. There will be no fear of shortages, for there will be none. Friends, the best part is that all who at the present have not been fully enlightened will be there in the earthly phase of that kingdom and given the opportunity to become the earthly seed of Abraham represented by the sand upon the seashore. Even your loved ones who have died will be awakened from the sleep of death and taught the truth. May we continue to pray for the time when there will be peace on earth. May we continue to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth. Has this prophecy by Micah taken on a new meaning to you? Have you been encouraged to make a further study of this important subject? May we send you a free copy of The Divine Plan of the Ages, which contains an enlightening study on the subject of the kingdom of God. Many other topics are also considered. Send today for a free copy of The Divine Plan of the Ages. There is no obligation. For the free literature offered on the Divine Plan program, please phone the sponsors at 1-800-8-DIVINE. The number again is 1-800-8-D-I-V-I-N-E. Rightly divide the word of truth by studying the Bible topically and dispensationally. Please phone us at 1-800-8-DIVINE or write to Divine Plan, Post Office Box 4085, Fort Worth, Texas, 76164. May you be blessed as you study the divine plan of the ages.